the nonprofit podcast powered by DonorBox. We all know that volunteers are the lifeblood of nonprofits, but did you know that volunteer recruitment consistently ranks as the top concern for volunteer managers in nonprofit organizations, closely followed by volunteer retention? So how can nonprofits create experiences that not only attract volunteers, but also keep them engaged and committed to the cause? Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Jenna, nonprofit advocate here at DonorVox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. My journey in the nonprofit world began as a volunteer, and that experience ignited a passion within me to pursue a career in volunteer management for many years. And it was through this role and these roles that I encountered firsthand the challenges and the joys of engaging volunteers effectively. As we approach April and National Volunteer Month, I am so thrilled to have Gung Wong, CEO and co-founder of Civic Champs, join us today. Civic Champs is a volunteer management software platform dedicated to helping organizations streamline their volunteer programs. Welcome, Gung. It's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me so early in the morning. You are such a champ, pun intended. Um, before we <laughs> dive in today, I would love for you to share a little bit about your background and what led you to co-found Civic Champs. Sure. So my background was largely in corporate. And so, um, you know, when I graduated uh, college, I went into consulting with McKinsey and Company for a number of years. Um, and then I did a couple of tech startups. And so the first one was called Rent Jungle as an apartment search engine. We wanted to be the Google for apartment search. And then had another company called uh, Community Health that did social media management, eight, you know. Um, and both were successfully exited and, and, and the outcomes were, were, were great. But, um, you know, when I wanted to do another uh, startup company, I really wanted to do something that had a bit more social impact. And that was something I realized and sort of the uh, previous forays was um, at times uh, while the company was doing well and growing and all these things, um, you know, sometimes it was not as motivating to help, you know, the local or dealership to sell another you know, truck or, you know, it, it's good, right? You're helping people. But um, I thought, hey, you know, what if the next venture could you know, have a more tangible social impact? And so I uh, landed on Civic Champs, really passionate about volunteerism. Um, uh, we launched in 2019. And so if you think back to that context, and even to some degree, it's not that dissimilar today, right? Um, there's a lot of um, strife, right, within, uh, you know, sort of, you know, whether you're uh, backing different political entities, right? Uh, that's around the same time when Black Lives Matters was, was, uh, was a, um, uh, a new movement. Uh, and so I thought, what's one thing that everyone agrees is fundamentally really positive? And so volunteerism. And so is there a way that we can help encourage, cultivate and, 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 and you know, um, help organizations, you know, grow their volunteer core? This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And I think that we need innovators like you to motivate us right in, in the community. So I, I love what you've done and what you continue to do with Civic Champs and I follow along like I'm such a fan at this point and we've only known each other for a few months now, but I think it's so evident that you've got such a passion for this work um, and that you've, you've found a really good spot. So um, I'm really eager to just jump right in. Uh, I want to tackle that big question. You know, we, we um, discussed a few different ways that we could take this conversation and what you brought to me was, um, you know, volunteer recruitment and retention. This is a challenge for uh, many nonprofits. So, why do you see why do you see these as major hurdles in the nonprofit sector and for um, volunteer managers? I think it's not too dissimilar from uh, the the private sector, right? Recruiting is always hard, right, and has been increasingly hard, right, as as sort of the labor market becomes tighter and you know there's you know, very low unemployment, et cetera. Um, I think with recruiting in particular, right now. You're talking about post-COVID, right? So a lot of programs shut down. And so there's actually, you know, we have to get back to pre-COVID levels, right? Because uh, not only that, probably exceed that because the demand for services, unfortunately, has continued to increase as well. So you actually need more 
uh, support for for all of these organizations. And so I think that's you know that's really you know the the main reason why recruiting uh, continues to be a big topic in, in, in volunteer management. Uh, related to that, of course, is retention. You don't have to recruit nearly as much if you can retain your folks. Uh, and every nonprofit I've ever talked to, right there. They, they generally have these super volunteers that come in every week, every day, perhaps even. And those are the ones you're like, how do I get more of them, right? Because from a, uh, you, know, uh, you know, using business terms and ROI standpoint, those are the great volunteers that if you can recruit one, right, they, they really fill up you know, the same position as maybe recruiting 10 one-time volunteers or even 20 one-time volunteers. Um, and so I think the, the challenge, though, is a couple... Uh, additional factors, right? So one is consumers now expect more, right? As we as people. And so we've gotten used to remote work, virtual work. Um, people really like that flexibility, they realize they like that flexibility. Uh, and I'm not sure from a volunteering standpoint or volunteer recruitment, we've really reflected that shift and in, um, in how people think about their 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 work and their life. Um, I think on the fl plus side, people also have uh, gotten a sense that, hey, I need to do something more meaningful in my life. And that's that's been a boon, right, on, on that side of it. And and you can see that, right, the the uh, search for volunteer opportunities near me on Google is higher than ever, right, even before COVID. And so you there's there's sort of this demand out there or this wish or want to uh, to do things that are meaningful. Uh, but I think we have to maybe perhaps do a slightly better job of meeting people where they are. Um, and then, you know, maybe changing some of our processes. I think you're hitting the nail on the head here. That's really interesting perspective that I don't think I've ever considered. I was a volunteer manager before COVID, during COVID, after COVID. And I would say on site, I was, you know, remote as well. So I experienced so many different levels of engagement and commitment, right? But it was still always a challenge, no matter what role or what capacity that volunteer management was in, to bring those super volunteers in, right? Because yes, you're right. We had maybe five amazing volunteers that had been with any of the organizations for years and years. They said yes to everything, and we want more of those people. And I was always left questioning you know, is it the way I'm communicating to my volunteers? Is it, uh, yeah, is it life things for them? Is it that our programs are not engaging enough for them? What is it that people will apply? They'll go through orientation even, and then they'll volunteer a few times and maybe come back for the exciting seasons and the cool big events, right? Um, so I really, right. I really appreciate your perspective on having this, um, mindset mindset shift on making sure that we're meeting them where they are now and to be honest i don't know where they are now i've been removed from the space now for a few years how can organizations meet their volunteers where they are and we all know that retention is cheaper than you know uh recruitment right so uh, what can organizations do to um help bridge that gap yeah, so there's probably you know two or three things that I can think of. Uh, the first is uh, as a platform like C Civic Champs, right? We one I think one of the unique things that we do is we collect feedback after every session, and we make it really easy, right? It's you could do it on a kiosk, you could do it on an app, and it's the same experience again. If I think about it from a consumer standpoint, that we're all already super used to. When you buy something on Amazon, it's like, hey, is that a five star purchase, a four star purchase? You know, when you order food on DoorDash, did you have a good experience? How was the food? How was your driver? You know, if you if you book an Uber to travel around, you know, was your driver a five star driver or a four star driver? And so allowing easy ways for people to give that sort of quick feedback. Heck, even our bathrooms at the airport, right? There's like the smiley yep. faces like, are we clean or not clean? Um, and so I think that's one easy way if you can have a platform or, or some solution where you can easily get feedback and not everyone wants to tell you to your face that like oh xyz didn't quite go as well as i'd like right or you know and then just giving them that uh opportunity to share their thoughts is, is also very valuable and so i think that's on sort of the technology and sort of like maybe like an easy thing to do um the other pieces are more let's call it classic <laughs> hasn't really changed because of technology 
And that for me is really understanding two things. One is who are your best volunteers? And do you know why they volunteer for you, right? And actually having that conversation with them, say, what is it that motivated you? What is the thing that you get out of this experience? What, you know, um, and by the way, do you have friends that would like to come? Um, and this is tied into that first piece too, right? If you, if you can, if you know from feedback that there are some folks that are really happy, maybe you reach back out to them and say, hey, you know, can you commit? Can you take a pledge, right, to, to come once a month, right? Because we love having you and here's all the reasons why and here's the impact that you've had. Um, and so really understanding, you know, your core volunteers that you really want to recruit and what, what motivates them. And that leads me to my second point, which is I would really look at what language, what specific words these volunteers are using to describe why it is that they love being with you. Because I, I'm, I'm, it's almost 100% uh, certain that the words that they use are not the words that we use, right? When, when as, a, as a nonprofit, when we're marketing, when we're recruiting, uh, because we're always in our own little bubble. We have our acronyms. We know, you know, and we, you know, we, we probably undersell our mission usually because we feel like, oh, well, everyone knows our mission, which is generally actually not true. You, you need to repeat it so many times. Um, but also they are going to use very specific words that resonate to that specific audience. And so again, uh, you know, uh, a lot of folks are trying to recruit younger volunteers and you could do that same exercise. What are the words specifically and how did they describe you? What is the impact that they're looking for? What are the pain points that they're solving in their lives by volunteering with you and using that to really target your uh, recruitment strategy and, and, and sort of the, the way you, you, you talk to volunteers? Uh, like active listening. I had a conversation with uh, Chris Barlow from Beeline Marketing a few weeks ago, and he talked about active listening for donors, but I think it's active listening for all of your supporters, right? You're, you're taking mm. what they have to say and you're saying, I hear you, I see you, I understand you. Now let's translate that into your experience with our organization. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm Listen. hearing from you. And I think that's a really good point. You know, how closely are you listening to your volunteers? And you're right, how nonprofits communicate about their mission or about their programs is very different from, I think, what supporters um, are communicating back, right? Uh, the language is different and it, you need to bring it down to that mm -hmm. level. So doing all these things, implementing surveys and, um, you know, hearing and understanding their perspective, what do you do with that feedback to create, um, you know, these meaningful uh, volunteer experiences? Perhaps you are bringing them in now. And so getting them to stay and stay active, um, what what does that look like? Yeah, so if we if we imagine we did all of that and now you have uh, this you know, great pipeline of volunteers coming in, you know, how do we how do we keep them, right? Um, and so I, there's there's probably again some of the basics, some pieces around technology, right? And so on the the basic side, Everyone wants to get um, get to work right when they're volunteering, and, I, and that's one of the gaps I see oftentimes is that that uh, clear expectations of what you should you should expect when you come in, when you get there. There's clear directions of exactly what you need to do, and you're able to get to it pretty quickly, right? And technology can play a role here, right? So if you have a long line and people are milling about for 15, 20 minutes. That's actually very demotivating for, for volunteers. They're like, well, why, why am I here? I, I'm volunteering my time. I think my time is being wasted. And so is there ways that you can really streamline that process um, through, you know, like a mobile app check-in or like a kiosk check-in that can make it do, 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 do really quick, right? Um, I think that's uh, a piece of it is, you know, that, that expectation setting and then that, um, that streamlining mm -hmm. of your process. I think there's a third piece, right, which is, you know, we've been connecting with a number of folks around storytelling and um, uh, peers that that really work on on that side of the uh, uh, equation. Uh, there's a, a good friend uh, of ours, you know, Chris from Memory Fox, and they have a great solution that's around collecting videos. Uh, but one of the things that has come out, you know, both with them and other folks that we work with, is there's small things you can do to maybe make the experience more emotionally engaging. And so I'll give I'll give us uh, an easy example. Uh, you know, over 
Thanksgiving and Christmas, there's always these toy dr uh, drives and food drives, etc. And a lot of times what people think about is, oh, I get to clear out my pantry with all the stuff I, you know, I, I'm not really using, but, but somebody else could use, right? Like that's sort of the mindset. It's like, oh, great. This is awesome, right? I'm doing good. And also I'm clearing out my, my pantry. Um, one little twist to that could be when you ask for that do donation, you say, hey, can you donate one item that you have a personal connection to, right? You have some sort of story that you want to. And, and if you, um, if you meet in person uh, for, for that, even better, you can go around and share that story. If you're not meeting in person, maybe a little, a little posted or sticky, right? That, that you ask people to write what, why does, you know, this item is important to them. And now that volunteer or that donor is thinking about tying that sort of emotional connection now to your organization, not just that I'm clearing up my pantry, right? And there's, you know, other examples of this, right? Where, um, if you have a group come in and and you can add just a little element of fun to it, um, you know I, I heard um, I think it was Stacy at the Education Partnership. They uh, they have uh, groups of um, kids that come in and they package you know sort of school supplies for teachers, etc. Um, but she'll have them play like a game of telephone as they're working, right? And that just makes it a little bit more fun. It's engaging, and now they have this cool fun memory in addition to helping people, right? Um, that they tie it all together and, and make that more of a emotionally impactful uh, experience. I love that. I think that that emotional connection piece is so incredibly important. And as volunteer managers, I think that sometimes we can forget to create that connection, right? We assume that people are volunteering because, well, they want to do good and they already feel connected to yes, our same. cause, but that may not necessarily be the case. You know, uh, I think that all the volunteers here do gooders for sure, but um, to help them along and well, take the time, first of all, to really talk to them about why they decided to volunteer and, you know, that connection there. But then, yeah, creating those experiences around that really makes a big difference. You know, I um, when I worked at the Center for Pup Tree Arch, which is the Jim Henson Museum. Uh, it's just automatically Ugh. the coolest place in the world. You've got Bid Bird and Elmo and all that great stuff. You think that people go because they're super fans of Jim Henson. So we've got, you know, workshops where people were making um, paper puppets with the children. And, um, you know, we would do the same thing. We would blast some silly music. And when it stopped, everybody had to freeze or, you know, just some goofy, memorable things that um, would would keep our high energy people coming back. Right. And um it's hard to think about more right. serious work, right? If you're working at a domestic violence shelter or for a foundation, a, some sort of humanitarian work, mm. I guess I'm putting you right. on the spot here, you know, thinking about creating yeah. those engaging moments when it is serious work. How do you, mm. how do you do that? Mm. I think there are, and you know, so, so again, going back to that storytelling piece, a lot of folks that have uh, that are volunteering there may have a personal connection in some way. Now, whether they want to share that story right publicly or or, or, or even with you is, is is you know obviously a hundred percent up to them, and you need to um, make it so that they're comfortable. Um, but I think that is certainly one way right to uh, to serve you know re enhance you know enhance that emotional connection right it's like oh well and and here's an outlet if you want right to share your story and and make an impact here um you know i think the other piece of that is you know we work with you know it's not as perhaps you know a level uh you know higher in terms of you know the um of the seriousness right but you know we work with a ton of habitat for humanity right and and you know, it's, it's fun to build houses and things, but one of the great things they always do is they generally almost have always have you meet the family, right? Or they tell you why, like, who's moving here? Here, here's the family and, and they'll build next, you know, right next to you, right? They're, um, uh, they're, they're helping to build their own home and you're building next to them. And that, right. The super, super powerful is like, okay, one version of this is like, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're building housing for, for people to need. That's kind of like a vague concept. And the, and the second version is, no, I'm building this for Maria and her two kids. And there's Maria. I just met her, right? And, and I, I would like to continue to help, right? And, and maybe come back, right? And so um, I think that's, 
you know, for, for perhaps more serious uh, organizations, right? Those are, those are really powerful. Of course, it's, you know, really in that case, right? Focusing on the impact and the mission and, and having them, you know, in some way, if they can see or taste or feel some of that uh, more directly, I think it's. I think that's a really good point. Well, I know that this conversation is going very quickly and I could talk about this so much longer with you, but yeah. I'm looking ahead. What do you envision as the future of volunteer engagement? Do you see any emerging trends or innovation? Um, you know, you talked a bit about tech, um, but what should nonprofits be exploring to create, um, you know, more engagement and those meaningful connections with their organization? I think technology will play a role. Um, the thing that technology does is gives you hopefully more capacity, but also more options, right? And so sometimes we're not able to do certain things because like, oh man, that that would be so much work and I couldn't possibly take on more work. And so technology, if it can make it easier for you to change your processes or do things a little differently, that can really open the door. And so one of the things that I think about a lot is are there ways that we can baby step people into becoming regular volunteers, right? Uh, you know, so many uh, studies in psychology or sociology show this again and again, right? It's like you need, uh, or even on the donor side, right? We don't ask your first time donor for a million dollars, right? We don't ask them for a thousand dollars, and we, right? And we ask them for a, 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 an amount that gets them in the door. And then you have an opportunity to cultivate and educate them because now they're 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 feeling like they're tied to you. They 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 are a donor, right, uh, to the cause. And so they're part of the cause, and then you can you know, sort of build upon that. And so I think for volunteering, it's very similar, right? Are there ways, um, especially for organizations that are you know, mentorships you know, oriented, or you, you need a lot of training, background checks? Um, that's a lot to ask. Right? And uh, if I don't even know very much about your organization, man, I, I would really need to be uh, all in, so to speak, for for this, you know, maybe it's because my best friend is 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 there, and they talk, you know, they you know, they're always uh, talking about it, and and so that's why I do it. Uh, but short of that, right? Are there opportunities for people to get a little bit of a taste, right, without having to do all of that? Um, you know, maybe it's helping with your gala, like you don't, you know, or it, maybe it's like a um, you, you're you're tabling somewhere, or you know, there's some other thing that you're doing that's a little bit of a lower touch that gets them in the door, right? And then you can build upon that. I think that is incredibly insightful and not something that I had ever considered before in any of my volunteer engagement opportunities. Um, those bite-sized experiences that will get them in the door. I love that. Okay. I am sure that our listeners are itching to put some of your insights into action. So before we wrap up, what is one practical step our nonprofit leaders or volunteer managers can take right now to level up their volunteer engagement. One thing they can do this week. Oh, you should you should sign up for civic champs. No. <laughs> um, so I, I would say, you know, of course, right, Leo, I, you know, I would remiss not to say, you know, technology could play a big role. Um, that might not be a thing you do exactly this week, right? You need approvals and all those things. Uh, what I would probably do is um, I think that the baseline is always just really understanding your volunteers. If it's been a while, right, their their motivations have changed, situations have changed. So, you know, taking a, taking a moment uh, to interview or talk to two or three of your best volunteers, right? Really understanding what is it that you know that motivates them, feel, make them feel appreciated, of course, right? And um, see if you can tug out just a few nuggets, right? Of like, oh, the way they talked about that was so interesting. I've never thought of it that way. I'm going to, I'm going to use that in our next social post, right? Use that exact language, right? Um, and, and, and that, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and it's not like you have to be, uh, perfect in that first go around, right? It's just, you know, that, that constant uh, iteration is, is sort of the, the way I like to think about baby steps, right? Um, you know, every little nugget makes you, you know, gets you a little bit closer. Easy enough. And I think that, you know, those insights from your volunteers can definitely lead to big improvements in that engagement and in that retention. And I love the idea of, too, this is creating a feedback loop to ensure that your volunteers are feeling heard and valued and that what they're saying is being reflected in your communications all around, right? So it's all about building that sense of community 
in partnership. Uh, so thank yep. you for sharing that practical tip with us. And thank you so much, Gong, for being with us here today. This has been a long time coming and it's been really great hearing from you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jenna. I appreciate it. Remember, building strong connections with volunteers is key to the success of any organization, whether it's through meaningful interactions, shared experiences, or innovative approaches, there are countless ways to make a lasting impact. Thank you for joining me on the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Be sure to click the download button on your podcast player, then leave the Nonprofit Podcast a review. Or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. Your review is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. Until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone, it's not just happiness. It's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first-time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox helping you help others.